What's up, everybody? This is Long the Saint, and I am back with a brand new deck for you. This is Blue Red Grateful Dead. I'm calling it Grateful Dead for three reasons. One, I love the Grateful Dead. Two, it's blue and red, kind of like uh, the Grateful Dead Steal Your Face logo. And three, uh, we have a bunch of undead in here. As you can see, we have the Glory Seeker, which can trade with almost anything in the early game. We have a couple of um, Einhard Thanes. We have Valar Smith, which is kind of a payoff for putting in these undead. It's able to um, pump them up, give them plus one, plus zero, plus two, plus one, and also armor one if it's forged. Uh, we have a Berserker Ganger, which is kind of part of our meme dream, which I'll get to in a second with this deck. Um, it gives other minions frenzy when it's out on the battlefield. And finally, we have Draugr, kind of a forgotten top-end finisher for blue. You don't see in a whole lot of decks on the ladder, but this card is actually, I think, kind of underrated in my opinion. Um, it's tough to remove because he heals himself, and he's going to get uh, bigger when you do attack. So Draugr, I think it's kind of an underrated card, but we'll try him out and see how he does. And really, at the heart of this deck, um, the Undead are kind of a sub-theme in here. At the heart of this deck, it's really a grand finale deck. So we want to put a bunch of Forge minions in here. As you saw, we had the Valar Smith. In addition, we have, you know, Hydrophonic Hank, uh, which is a Forge minion. We also have the Ruby Raider. And we also have the Gorgonelli as well. So this is pretty much a, a safe house, um, kind of like the purple-red uh, mid-range deck. This is going to be a safe house, uh, grand finale style of deck. And the meme dream with this deck, as I mentioned, is we get Berserker Ganger on the battlefield, and then we play out our grand finale. So we'll get to hopefully throw a couple minions, and they'll all have Frenzy when they come in. Um, and what's nice about the Valar Smith is that um, it triggers once it enters the battlefield, and technically, even though the animation looks a little bit different, they're all coming on the battlefield at the same time. So even the ones we finale will be able to uh, be able to uh, give its awaken ability to. And because of Berserker Ganger, they'll all be coming in as undead as well. So that's kind of the meme dream with this deck. Or we can just uh, play out the Summering Ritual at the Berserker Ganger. But hopefully this deck doesn't need a combo to finish. Hopefully it'll just be able to do lots of uh, fun things. We're looking to just kind of play like a typical safe house deck. Just make those one for one trades in the early game. Trade off with their opponent minions. Uh, we also have some good removal in here. We have... You know, a couple of Ford Lightnings. We have a couple of uh, Crucible Flares in here as well. So we'll keep their board under control. Don't let them get out of hand. Make those one-for-one -one trades. And then once we get to a Grand Finale Summering Ritual or we're able to get a couple big minions out on the board, we'll do that and, uh, you know, finish them off. Hopefully draw a couple of cards off the safe house along the way. So enough chit-chat about this. Let's get into the action and we'll see if this deck is actually good or if it's just kind of a fun meme. So for this first match, our opponent's going to be playing what I consider like a big blue sort of deck. Uh, as you can see, it goes all the way up to uh, Volcanic Rizzi or whatnot. It's mostly a Valkyrie deck, but it goes a little bit bigger than that. So hence, big blue. I'm going to burn the Ruby Raider, so that'll give us one uh, Forged Minion if we should draw into the uh, Grand Finale at some point. We have a pretty good hand for dealing with them one for one. Each time they throw down a minion and eliminate it, we're still getting one step closer to getting the card draw off of our path. My Valkyrie Tough comes down, and I do have the Sharp Worn Bull. I burn two red. Now I'll burn the Valar Smith, so that'll give us another Forged minion to put back into the deck. And Road Queen, that's going to pump up the tough, so looking for an answer here. And thankfully we got that extra card draw because Wings of Abaddon is a very good answer. We can take out the Road Queen and we'll also take out the tough as well. So we essentially get a two for one off of it. Here comes another tough and second verse, same as the first. Let's put another Sharp Worm Bull. In front of that tough. Also put the flag of resistance on it. That way if they play a road queen. You can just continue to be able to block it. 
but no Road Queen this time. It's going to be Magnus, so unfortunately they're going to be able to take out that Shop One Bull. Not a huge deal, though. Here comes the Thane, and we also have the Forge Valar Smith. So that'll pump the Thane up to a 4-4 and also give it Armor 1. So now it doesn't trade with Magnus, so I'll have to do some additional damage. Or they can just bounce it with a Valkyrie Enforcer. We draw an extra card off of our path because they keep having more minions than us. So I play down the other Smith, pump the first one, get it for 5. Start pushing some damage. We can take a hit here from Magnus. Alright, that's going to force a trade. Comes another tough. The opponent's running out of gas. They're down to just one card in hand. So I think I'm just going to kind of clog them up, take away their options. Get it for five. So all those trades are favorable to us, but Cataclysm is going to wipe out the entire board. So was not expecting to see that in this deck. Uh, this deck went a little bigger than I thought it would. But here comes uh, Spear Sister. And I can play the Broggy's Ballad and the Extract Life this on the same turn. The so I'm going to do just that. See if I draw anything good. Then I can throw back. It's not the most useful. But Seven Ring Ritual could be a good finisher, especially if they have one card in hand. They have played one Magnus and one Thunderclap. But there might be a second Thunderclap, or there might be another Cataclysm. So I want to be a little cautious when playing out the Seven Ring. And Gulveg's Grace was not a card I was expecting to see in this kind of deck. But it is going to fill the opponent's hand back up and give them a bunch of life. So now we're kind of back to square one. We're back to seven cards each. An empty board. This one. But Serapsis is going to drain them for one. We'll play out the Rogers Ballad, draw some more cards. And Freki's side card, so here comes Trouble. There's a Spear Sister. There's a Lucky, so that's going to tempo us a bit. See what it hits. Hits the Oka Dodana, so Oka Dodana costs one more. But Magnus loves to see all ones and twos for toughness, so bye bye everything. Wipes out the board, and we'll throw down a Thane. Get some additional pressure. There's another sidecar. So more trouble coming. Yep, there's Kara Morning Wives. There's another Lookie. Alright, Gorgonelli. That's another one that has Forge, so we'll throw that back in the deck. And I don't have Magnus this time, but I can get two points of damage out of the Shop 1 Bull. By using uh, Mani Queen of Tide's ability, so that's going to take out two-thirds of their minions by giving an extra attack to the bull. And maybe I didn't need to block Care Morning Wives. Maybe I could have uh, kept that on board do some additional damage, but no, it doesn't really matter. We're getting some good pressure. Gigantomachia feels a bit rough using it as a one-for-one, -one, but we're trying to close out the game, so feels all right in this instance. Unfortunately, we do have an answer for that second Volcanic Rizzy. Okay, Flag of the Resistance of Magnus. He'll suicide into it, and then we can play the Wings. Give it Invulnerable. Finish off the Rizzy, and then we'll get in with the Shock One Bull to take out the Freki Scout. So now the opponent's back down to just two cards in hand. There's an Oka Dodana. So we're just four points away from being able to close this out. There's Hydrophonic Hank. There goes the wings, we'll ping them for one, and the opponent's going to throw in the towel right there. So I wanted to show that match, because that's usually how you want these games to play out. Um, I was a little hesitant to play the Seven Ring Ritual being against blue, but in the end we were able to get the job done. Uh, you saw in the early game, we were able to trade one for one quite frequently and quite successfully, and I think that's one of the strengths of this deck, is the early game, it's very good at being able to make those one-for-one -one trades. We have a lot of uh, direct damage and whatnot. And each time they play minion, we're just able to take it out and draw a couple of extra cards off of our path. So that's typically how you want a game to play out with this. I uh, just didn't get a real good finisher um, at the end. And let's try another match and see if we can maybe get a grand finale going. 
All right, my opponent in this one is going to be playing blue-green spell combo, so I gotta watch out for that turn seven All Father's Horn. And the problem with playing this kind of deck and control decks in general, as we draw a second Valor Smith, so we can burn the other one we have. Um, the problem is that they're quite okay with playing the draw go game right alongside you. So as you can see, our opponent's not putting anything on the board, so I may have to be a little more proactive in this one. So I draw the Glory Seeker. I'm going to play it out. If I can maybe get a removal spell out of them, um, you know, force some action on their end, that might help us in the later game. So there's a Spellflux Cauldron. And they do put down a Forgeling, just a block. But fortunately, we have a Forked Lightning. So we can get that Forgeling out of the way, get in for three points of damage, because we don't have another minion on board. So Glory Seeker doing his job. I also drew the Gorgonelli. I could burn that to put a third Forged Minion back in the deck, but I don't want to at this point, because I also don't have a turn five play. I want to keep him as an option if I don't have anything else to do on turn five. But Crystal Flare is going to give us something to do. We also have to account for that Samosic they put down, so... Flag of the Resistance, we'll pump it up so it'll survive I have the sword, and then we can heal it up with our uh, with our power as if nothing even happened. So Glory Seeker, finding a lot of glory. There's a Spellflux Cauldron. There's another Forgeling, but we have another Crucible Flare so we can get that out of the way. And there's Hydrophonic Hank. That's an easy burn. Hopefully we'll be seeing him again. There's Crucible Flare, and there's Valar Smith, so let's pump that up. Now, if we just left him as a 3-3, he would deal 4 damage. If we play the Smith, we can pump it up to 5. But Terminal Calculus is going to wipe all that out. So it does pay off to pay the uh, Valar Smith alongside the Glory Seeker, is what I'm trying to say. But all in all, that actually didn't feel too bad in Terminal Calculus. That just means our bigger stuff is less likely to run the removal. Just got to watch out for the Traitor's Murmur. Draugr comes out. How may I serve you? All right, there's the Warden. And there's the Tempered Forgeling. That's not going to be able to stop Draugr. So I'm happy to smash into that, get in for a couple points of damage. Then play out the Einhardt Thane. I don't have anything to use the Extract Life on, so I'm taking a bit of a risk leaving uh, White Tower Warden, because they will be able to have... Uh, All Father's Horn mana up. But I'm guessing they won't have quite enough to be able to do the job. And now they don't have enough to pay for the horn. They just drew it off of that Raid the Tombs. So I think we're going to be in the clear. I'm guessing my opponent is gambling we're not going to have enough life to do it because they didn't even stun the Draugr. Uh, instead, uh, Bella just... Made the spells cheaper, but there's Valar Smith. Get in for that extra little bit of damage. Give us some reach, and that'll finish off the opponent. So I wanted to showcase that one, because that was a game where the undead kind of uh, ruled the battlefield. Our Glory Seeker found a lot of glory, able to get in for a whole bunch of damage. Then a couple of Valar Smiths helped us out, being able to push damage. He saw by the end there, uh, Draugr was able to run them over. We were able to pump up that Einhardt Thane with another Valar Smith. So, yeah, the Undead, uh, they do come to play in this deck. They're very useful, have a lot of utility to them. Um, they feel really good when you can get that synergy going. So, well, I kind of wanted to do a grand finale. Wasn't able to pull off in that one, so let's try one more. See if we can give ourselves a grand finale for this video. For this last match, we are going to be going against Orange and Purple Aggro. And it always seems like I have Shopworn Bull in the opening hand. Happy to see him. That's an easy burn on turn number one. We also have the Valar Smith that can get burned. Put another Forge Minion back into the deck. Now Kyber Outcast with the uh, flag on it is going to be a little bit tricky to deal with. So I put the Einhardt Thane next to it. Don't want to put directly across. Hopefully they'll just bounce off each other. And then maybe I can finish it off with the Forked Lightning. But Vengeful Heirloom. Plus it's going to pump up because they burned a purple. So that's out of Lightning range. So I don't have anything I can do this turn. So we're just going to have to take our lumps. Froggy Spellet. Going to give us a couple of good cards. Gorgonelli being one of them. 
That's another one we can burn, put a Forge Minion back in the deck. So we should be set up for a full three for the finale. And Xerxian Sympathizer, I can take out either one with the Wings of Abaddon. As much as I'd like to get rid of that Kyber, I mean, if they play a Zealot or two or a Ripple or two, that can do a lot more damage than the, than the Kyber Outcast. So unfortunately, I got to crash him in Sympathizer instead. And we're just going to keep taking the hits. Are you ready? Yeah. We are coming up on turn five, which is a pretty critical turn for us. Can we get this board under control? We do have some answers. There's a Thunderclap. Put the Glory Seeker next to it. That'll have Slayer. Actually, it won't because we'll put the... Uh, we'll put our token, the Rebel Partisan, in front of it. So that way, even if they have a Racer and Shadow or two, they won't be able to move everything. But since there's Spitfire, it's going to let it dance right around our defenders. All right. Mantle of Authority... So our opponents swarm in the board, but at least we're finally able to take out the Kyber Outcast. And Fork Lightning is just going to wipe out their board. We were also able to get in for three with the Glory Seeker, so Glory Seeker once again, putting in some work. There's a Racer and Shadow, they're trying to finish this off, ignoring the Glory Seeker. There's a Vengeful Heirloom. We're going to pump that up, make it tougher for us to remove. Get it with the Glory Seeker. Put a Gorgon Alley right in front of it. So even if they take out uh, the Gorgon, it'll still deal 3 damage to them. All right, there's another Storied Martyr, so that's going to get pumped up. Juice is going to pump it up even bigger. And there's our grand finale, finally. Now, it doesn't matter what order they come down in for the animation. Fowler Smith, I put it on Hank. I should have just put on the Glory Seeker. I don't know what I was thinking. I think I was trying to play defensively with the Hank so it wouldn't take damage from our Shock Ward Bull. But, I, yeah, I should have just pushed damage, put it on the um, Glory Seeker, got an extra point of damage. Alright, we'll pin them for one. And that should be enough for Lethal. So we got the grand finale. We are able to get a Smith, a Bull, and a Dolphin. Quite the motley crew we were able to throw out with that grand finale. But yeah, that closed out the game very nicely for us. Um, I should have been able to get a little more damage off the Valar Smith with that. Again, I don't know why I put on Hank. I think I just wanted to protect him from uh, Shop Warren Bull's damage. But at that point, the opponent really didn't have any cards in hand. So... Even if they just play a card out every turn, not going to get a whole lot of utility out of Hank at that point. But got the finale that I wanted. And as you can see, this has been a fun deck. It's able to, you know, beat up on combo decks, on mid-range decks, on uh, aggro decks. So overall, this deck feels very good. But um, I'll give my uh, final say on it when we go back to the deck list. All I've got to say is what a long, strange trip it's been with this deck. I put it together not thinking much of it. I kind of just expected it to you know, be a fun deck, to be you know, a silly sort of meme deck with all the undead in it. But as it turns out, it's legit good. Um, I'm doing really well. This is my favorite ladder deck at the moment. All the undead that I've included in here have felt reasonable. Uh, Glory Seeker in particular, you saw he was able to find a lot of the glory that he sought. He's able to push a lot of damage on the opponent. And in general, just in the early game, um, he's a good one-drop because he trades with almost anything, especially when he's by himself. You know, he can deal with the uh, with the brine bounds. He's able to deal with the eggs and whatnot. So, yeah, Glory Seeker has been a really good, really reasonable one-drop. Might go down an Ironheart thing uh, just to add another one. Uh, let's see what else. We got the Valar Smith. Smith has felt really good. The errata change, the fact that it's now Valkyrie, doesn't really make much of a difference in this deck, but it's able to push some additional damage, especially if we get uh, to use her ability on one of our undead. And the fact that she puts additional damage after a uh, grand finale is really good as well. So Valor Smith has felt excellent. Now, Berserker Ganger, we haven't seen much of in these matches, but there are times when he sticks to the board, he can just take over a game really quickly. I have not been able to play Grand Finale with him on board. Still want to see that. I was able to get it set up once, but the opponent quit before I did. 
I have gone off one seven ring ritual with them and the opponent probably quick that's who wants to deal with a bunch of three power minions with frenzy. So Berserker Ganger uh, has felt good, even though I didn't really get the feature in much. And the Draugr, as you saw, really good, really sadly kind of a forgotten top end for blue. Uh, reasonable choice, especially if you can get a Valar Smith on him to deal some extra damage. So good at closing out games. Uh, other cards I felt good about in here, you know, Grand Finale. I think that was the right way to go. Uh, not as powerful as, say, his Purple Red with the Finale. You know, we don't have a Risen from the Deep that comes in with Immortal or Cold-Blooded Killer, which is able to do a lot of useful things. But I will say with this deck, the advantage it has over Purple Red, uh, the bottom end is a lot stronger. We have our suite of removal spells. We have a couple of Fork Lightnings. We have our Crucible Flares. Um, this is better able to trade with the opponent's early minions and also remove stuff. Uh, Purple Red, it always feels like like it's a bit of a trip to get to the, the grand finale. And against a control deck, it does really well. But I would say this deck is better at dealing uh, with the lower end of the curve than Purple Red is, even though it doesn't have as big a finale. And really, that's all I've got to say about this deck. Um, it's really good, really reasonable, really solid. Don't know how far this will be able to go on the ladder. The ladder is really polarized right now. You have a lot of control decks, a lot of really aggro-ish decks. There's not a whole lot of room for mid-range, but where I do really like this deck is using it for a Conquest-style tournament. So if you're looking for something to try uh, for the next uh, Mythgard Open, this might be a jet deck that you want to check out because it uses, you know, blue-red. And it's, you know, it's I think it's pretty reasonable, especially if you can filter out the bad matchups but even on the ladder i'm mid gold right now this still feels reasonable so overall this is a good solid deck and i'm glad i stumbled across this thing this has felt really well so try it out for yourselves let me know what you think i will leave a link for the deck in the description below if you enjoyed this video hit like and subscribe and i will see you guys next time